You don't know. You don't know what prayer is till the devil knocks your door and invade and ta and try to take your only child. Are you hearing me like a mother? Then something breaks forth in the inside of you, and you will scream and pray like you've never prayed before, and tell the devil, "Loose my baby. Take your hands off my baby. I take my baby back." One of my daughters was in a very difficult situation in childbearing and I was praying flying. And the Lord said to me over 35,000 feet above sea level. He said, when you land in D.C., go to the hospital and take your daughter out of the hands of the enemy. He said, son, go to the hospital and by parental authority, take her out of the hands of the enemy and tell the grave, death and hell, you can't have her. And everything was crazy until I went there and I stood by her bed and I said, girl, you are my baby. And I'm taking you out of the hands of the enemy. And I said, I invoke divine restraining order over death, over hell, and over the grave. You can't have her. She's mine. I take her. I buy her back. I redeem her by the blood from the hand of the enemy. Shataka. Somebody lift up your hands and pray in other tongues right now. Shatakaha, Shatakaha, Lakata Bahaya, Malagata Lavataza, Italaganda Labo. Somebody break forth, let the river slow. Somebody open your mouth, somebody break forth. Don't hold back. Shata, Ikataya, Madarakatanda, Meleteke, Ishato, Lagreto, Melefasu, Ilapalala Gite, E Kitala Maga, Katali Shata, Ile Katumalahaga, Ibalanda Lamahaya, E Igondolomo Shatakaba. Jesus. Give me two minutes. Hear me. Jed, I want you to look at me. I'm not a dawn and a doom prophet. But I come to tell you, unless we adopt prayer as a lifestyle, it's going to smite the shepherds of the church. And many mega churches are going to go down. In the early 70s, in the early 70s, most of the mega churches, Papa will tell you, he's been around for a long time. And the only reason why he has prevailed and still remain anointed at the cutting edge is not because he's better than so many of his friends who have died and gone to be with the Lord. But I travel with Papa and even at his age, he will still fast and he will still pray until the meeting is over before he eats. And there are so many preachers today who will never fast. And who will never pray because we know all the technicalities and we know what to say and make the people laugh and happy and all that. Oh, forget it. That is not going to change this world. The world is looking for power. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's looking for people that will say, that says yes, the Lord. And it comes to pass within 24 hours. Are you hearing me, somebody? The Muslims pray five times a day all their lives as a lifestyle the jews pray three times a day all their life as a lifestyle they do it whether they are happy or not whether they are under attack or not whether they are blessed or not uh, whether whether they are sad or happy they just do it it's a lifestyle how many times does the believer praise a day you think you stand a chance because the Muslims are not just praying. They are invoking all kinds of entities. They're dealing with all kinds of forces in Pleiades, in Aturos, in Orion, in Mazarod, the Zodiacs, the powers of the underworld, the water kingdom. They are not just praying. They are dealing with white magic, black magic. They're dealing with different levels and dimensions of witchcraft for total takeover of the world and of our nations and all we do is to pray one or two times and think we've made it no unless prayer becomes a lifestyle continuously praying in the morning praying in the afternoon praying in the evening praying in the night praying at midnight unless we follow the four seasons 
and the four watches of the day and the four watches of the night and praying consistently when prayer becomes a lifestyle so you pray whether you feel like praying or not you pray when you are broke and you pray when you are blessed and you pray when you are down and you pray when you are up because prayer is a necessity for survival and for the maintenance of daily victory for the believer today in our conferences and in our meetings there is no prayer we have so much word and word and word and word and that preacher and that preacher and that preacher and the atmosphere is all just emotions and there is no fire and there is no fire and there is no presence and there is no unction and anointing to destroy the yoke it's not the preaching that breaks the yoke it's the anointing that the preacher brings to the meeting that breaks the yoke and anointing don't come by just preaching anointing comes when you spend time in the secret place and he breathes upon you ah jesus jesus said the other time he said when you pray shut the door behind you then he said pray unto your father who is in what secret so the secret place of the most high is the place of prayer and we need to go back to the place of prayer so many of you came that far through prayer and now we succeeded we are very anointed and we have everything we are very sophisticated so we're trying to use our head and our mind to intellectualize god you cannot navigate through the end time storms if you don't go back to the place of prayer whatever made you who you are and what you are you have to constantly maintain it if you came to where you are to prayer please don't let your success and how much money you have in your bank account and how many thousands you preach to get into your head because one attack of the enemy can take everything out Let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. Look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 10 and 11. The Bible said when all the people were praying outside at the time of incense. And the Bible said an angel of the Lord appeared to Zacharias the high priest standing on the right hand side of the altar of incense. The angel appeared at the time of what? Incense. And ladies and gentlemen, the time of incense is the time of prayer. And angels don't appear until prayer goes up. And heaven, it is unlawful for heaven to respond and to intervene in the affairs of humanity or family, cities, community, nations until prayer goes up. Because hear me, ladies and gentlemen. If God intervenes in the affairs of men without incense, which is prayer going up, Satan will accuse the justice of heaven. Because it's unlawful. The earth God gave to man, man gave it to the devil. Now even though Jesus has died and shed his blood, Satan legally steals owes and controls Adam's lease on the planet. Because Adam's lease on the planet has not yet expired. That's why the demon says, have thou come to destroy us before our time. So they have a time and their time is time sensitive. And so the only thing that holds back the adversary and blocks the adversary is the prayers of the saints. And when the saints don't pray, Satan has a legal right to do as he pleases. That's why the Bible says pray without season. It means that any season of your life that you give up praying, you hand over that season of your life to the devil. The Bible said men ought to always pray and not to faint. We're dealing with an enemy and church, hear me, the enemy don't play fair. Please believe me, this devil don't play fair. 
I know him. I know him. He tried to take me out from my mother's womb. I experienced him when my mother took seed of me. She bled and she became anemic. And the doctor said, Florence, you can't make it with this situation. You're bleeding too bad. You are weak. You are anemic. You can't carry this pregnancy. And they went in and performed a D and C to get rid of me. And months after they did whatever they did, they found out that I was still in there and they realized that we were twins. They realized that we were twins. And the other one didn't make it and I survived. And I believe I survived because somebody was praying for me. Somebody was praying for the coming of a warrior from his mother's womb. Are you hearing me? And I have fought. When you hear about my battles, you better shut your big mouth before you speak because you don't know my story. And you don't know my history. And there is a story always behind the story. So before you open your mouth, pray because you don't know my story. And when I was born, he tried everything. I lost three of my fingers. He tried to kill me. And this was how I came to know the Lord. When Jesus appeared to me on the bed of affliction and said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach. And for this reason, you were born to be a witness unto me, to the nations of the world. So you don't know my story. I know this devil. I've encountered him so many times. He's come into my hotel room so many times to fight me, to kill me. I've seen him. I know him. And he don't play fair. And life is not fair. And life don't give you what you deserve but what you fight for. And I came to tell somebody, unless you fight, you can't have the victory. The Bible says, he that overcomes will I give. So unless you overcome and you can't fight without a victory. Lift up your hands, everybody, right now. Shatakaha. Shetelehekes. Solavaki Divyazus. Somebody reach out. I didn't come to pray for you. I came to pray with you. I came to tell you if you will pray through, you will go back home and have 100% victory over that crisis situation waiting for you in your church, in your house, in your family. God will show you the way out of it. And you can survive anything that the enemy throws at you. Throw your best weapon at me and I will still be here. Shataha. Ukasata, somebody open your mouth, somebody lift up your hand, somebody talk to the Father.